And I think a lot of people were probably still last night watching the Bachelorette oh. finale, Ooh, which takes us on to today's guest. Last night was the finale of the Bachelorette, and Chris Harrison, as he always promises, it was filled with drama. To help us sort through our feelings, we are joined today by Emma Gray and Claire Fallon, who have a podcast dedicated to all things Bachelorette called Here to Make Friends. Please put your hands together for Emma and Claire. <laughs> I'm Lucas, nice to meet you. Hi, Lucas, Hi. nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Emma. Yeah. Hi. 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 Thanks for joining Hi, welcome. Welcome, ladies. I don't even know where to start with this one because oh, Chris sorry. Harrison is always like, this is the most dramatic, but I think a lot of people were actually shocked last night with her pick. Were you guys shocked? I wish I had been more shocked. I was disappointed, but not shocked. Okay. I'm just, I, this whole season, I'm so tired. Uh -huh. I'm just so tired. Right. Because the episodes keep you up so late. Yeah. That is certainly <laughs> part of it. Eight like hours three, long. Three hours is too many. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, tell us what you, th just like, tell me what you think about the guy. <laughs> <laughs> but she chose Garrett. Yes. What do you think about Garrett? Yes. Yeah, so this season was a weird one because as soon as the show premiered, there was a lot of information out there about Gareth that wasn't super flattering. Um, people found that he had liked a number of posts on Instagram that uh, made jokes about um, throwing children, yep. uh, undocumented children over a wall mm -hmm. or jokes about transgender people, um, feminists. feminists. Yeah, yeah. Park, so the, Parkland, crisis actors. Yeah, yeah. Right. accusing yeah. the Parkland yeah. survivors of being crisis actors. Yeah. Really you know, over the line things. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, kind of an early tell that Garrett won was that the show uh, rushed out to defend him and made sure that he put a statement out, Becca put a statement out. Uh, they clearly wanted to align behind him instead of sort of right. throwing him to the wolves of social media. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of early in the season thought, mm, Garrett might not be for us. Right. Um, <laughs> but he's for Becca. That's like the yeah. nicest yeah. way to say yeah. that. Yeah. He's yeah, not really our brand. Yeah, but... not our type. But <laughs> yeah, Isn't... I, oh, oh, sorry. I'm not a, a regular bachelor, or bachelorette watcher, but I of course watched last night. I was amazed by the walks. There's a lot of walking, yeah. walking oh. on beaches, walking, pensive, pensive walking. walking. You don't see the camera. And I was. This is what I'm amazed about because I sweat if I'm wearing a bathing suit outside. <laughs> These guys are wearing suit. Blake was sweating bullets. I felt yeah. bad for the guy. That, I was like, this really adds insult to injury. This yes. guy is getting his proposal rejected and he can't even figure out whether like it's Blo sweat yeah. or tears. Yeah. It's all just blended all together. And then you see him do it with his jacket yeah. and you're oh, like, oh, poor guy. Like, finally handed him a towel. Yeah. Like, at this point, everything's a towel. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's all like, hands on deck. I was, like, <laughs> poor guy. I was more sad about like he's sweating I know. profusely on camera. If I, I like, always I cry when I'm sweating that hard. Jumped in the water after. Yes. It's like, <laughs> I was like, jump in. in. It looks beautiful. That would have been the real yeah. solution. That would have been the real solution. What do you think of this trend of a lot of the winners actually receiving the first First impression rose. Mm. Mm. That happened this season. That happened with Rachel and Brian. The last yeah. three bachelorettes. Yeah. Are, so it's now four bachelorettes wow. have all amazing? chosen the guy they gave the first impression rose. I think it just indicates that women know know what we want, very know true. what we yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. They don't even need true. to have a whole show called The Bachelor. Yeah. They just have night one. She's like, I know which guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Right here. Into Everyone you. Else can let's go do. Home. That'd right? be the most amazing season. Like, oh. We we all go home, folks. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what the proposal is. Like, right. clearly, that's they figured out that that works. So. Yeah, that's the that show is version. trash, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But not this one. Yeah. This one's not trash. It's it's high quality, quality yeah. intellectual yeah. fare. Really. So yeah. what do you think about Blake? And like, do you think he's going to be our bachelor? Because he looked the part. And now everybody loves him. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. Often the runner up isn't the bachelor mm. because they're so devastated right. that it's hard to believe they could ever open their heart to love him. <laughs> like, I think yeah. Blake is going to die faithful to Becca. That's yeah. how I yeah. feel in my heart. Of course. But uh, so often it's like the number three person, mm. maybe Jason. He's had a good bachelor edit. Um, but the bachelor does have a little more time to you know reacclimate to society. The bachelorette mm. gets named uh, right after the mm. bachelor. Right. 
Um, so maybe. I think he'd be a good bachelor. He's very emotional. They will certainly talk to him. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would, would like a season just full of male tears. Yeah. That would be yeah. cathartic for me as yeah. a viewer. So. It's a good example to set for men to be emotionally vulnerable. I really like that. Uh, but, you know, I think we're also, we might see a little auditioning on Paradise mm. because mm. we did have a bachelor come out of Paradise. Nick, right? right? Yeah. yeah Nick. Yes. Oh, yeah. And at this point, they all, all the guys who want to be bachelor know what to say. They all do the media rounds and they go, the process, I just really believe that it works. Right. And I think that after the devastation with Becca, I'm ready right. soon to open yeah. my heart to love again. Right. Yeah. After my heart yeah. heals in maybe three to four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And I see yeah. a contract. Um, yeah, no, I, I, 30 I, hot women are presented. I did love like, how Blake, how will you move on? I'm like, oh, he's gonna become the bachelor. Like 30 women yes. throw him something. I'm like, he'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how many yeah. women slipped into his DMs last night? Oh, oh. Yeah. Like, it's always gotta be crazy. so bad for the guys who get dumped yeah. until two months later when we realize every woman on the planet yeah. has been trying to get with them in right. their DMs and they all turn out. Fine. Well, I think like that might be the reason why. I mean, do you see a, a real future for Becca and yeah. Garrett? I mean, I often think when young people get engaged on television and then suddenly gain like 200,000 Instagram followers, it's so easy to want to play around. Mm -hmm. Certainly, and we, we certainly <laughs> yeah. know that that happens. Although the last handful of bachelorettes are all still with right. the guys they chose. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess. You know, we'll see. I'll be interested to see whether um, their differing worldviews present right. more of a problem navigating a relationship in the real world where, you know, you can't just ignore all the news right. and um, yeah. you have yeah. to actually grapple with real things. I picture them just like, like, like MS like, Trump just put a child, please, yeah. like, we're not gonna look at that, no. Um, but of course, according to Garrett and Becca, they, they, they are growing a lot. There's a lot of growing yeah. happening. So I believe they grow <laughs> together. They're gonna be grow to be fine, you know? Yeah. A lot of non-specific growing. Not yeah. specific what, I don't know. Direction. Exactly. Let's not ask too many questions. Every day is like Thanksgiving with the family. Right. Right now. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I really thought that uh, Becca's uncle stole the episode for me, mm. and I was just kind of, you know, hoping that he would be the next bad guy. <laughs> I would watch a season of Uncle yeah, Chuck. I would sign up in a heartbeat. Yeah. I thought he was really cool. I loved how he was like, I like that Garrett's a poet. And I was like, did Garrett make, like, speak poetry and I miss it? Have you read poetry? Right. Yeah, I was like, like yeah. no, he was just crying. It's he called like, him a renaissance man because he was crying the entire time. Yeah, and yeah. he was also <laughs> crying, and they were crying together, and I was like, maybe they should just date. Right. <laughs> I actually That'd thought the tears clip. were like a little intense. Like if a guy was meeting my family for the first time and cried the entire time, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're so lot. tired by this <laughs> point. Right. Like, they're just like waiting for something to set off, you know, the yeah. water work. It does seem like, it, it's funny because like on one hand I was like, like when they returned to Blake after he was dumped in his dead side in the studio, like his mother was just killed. Like, I mean, oh, the most God. saddest thing in the world. But then you, I also kind of do get like, there's so much pressure put on you. You're like, you basically, force yourself, whether genuinely or not, to fall in love with this person, and then you are dumped in front of the world, it must just be like losing a presidential election, I guess. It's like, it must be what Hillary <laughs> yeah, felt like. It's just, just like, like just, I'm sure she can relate. The same impact, Yeah, 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 yeah. Bachelor, Hillary, yeah, they're absolutely. the same. <laughs> Hillary should go on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. no, it, is, it is, seems like a very traumatic experience. Yeah, I think it's a really intense, you know, they describe sort of the Bachelor bubble that you find yourself in. I think people need at least a month after to be like, wait, what were my feelings? Let mm -hmm. me sort out what was real and what was the fact that I had literally nothing else to think about and no access to books, television, <laughs> music, other or women. any, yeah, yeah. Other women, <laughs> to talk any to. friends other than producers who are making a TV show. You know? Yeah. Oh, we've watched Unreal, yeah. we know. <laughs> I think it would really mess you up. I yeah. like, I was thinking about last night after Blake proposed and he turns to the camera and he said, you know, I never really considered if she would say no. Mm. Mm. And I was like, how is that the case that <laughs> right. you didn't consider that? I mean, it seemed I, like he was considering nothing else during <laughs> the last week yeah. or so, so I was surprised to hear him yeah. say that. Yeah, I couldn't believe he said that. And then I thought, because he seemed so genuinely surprised, how that really would like mess with your head. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he said something that I think hit home to a lot of people, which is now I have to go through everything that's coming alone. That was yeah. sad. And that I was think, sad. yeah, I think he and Becca had talked about how they would handle press and how they would handle the secrecy. And instead, he was like, she's going to have a partner through all this, and I'm just going to be by myself, not able to yeah. tell anyone what's happening. And we all know what it's like to just have that feeling of, oh, everything I was sharing with a partner, I'm now going to deal with right. by myself. And that's really tough. Yeah. yeah. When he was like, yeah. they're going to be so happy at the end 
engagement. Right. Like I was like, yeah. oh God, I because know. he had, had again probably played through what he would say. I mean, he got to say some of it, but it's just like he had to then watch somebody else do yeah. it. I'm sure it didn't feel like getting to say some of it. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, it was why like why I wish you I let me. <laughs> I know, but at least I remember in past seasons they've let the guy say something and then get down on a knee. Hey. I'm glad she like. They've changed Stopped. that format, yeah. That's, yeah, that's just cruel. That it's cool because she's like looking at him, like trying. Like, she's like with this like subtle, ugly face, like oh, I know. She's what I'm like, about when to do I? Do. When yeah. Do I do? Um, yeah. No, I, I mean, I think uh, it's. What did he said something like? Um, oh, I'm blanking. But I, I, he was. Oh, when he was. Oh my God. When sorry. He said, my instincts are always right. Do yeah. Oh no. Oh, yeah. He kind of. I felt like he manifested yeah. his own downfall right. when he was in that room because I really thought he was gonna get picked, and then he was like, "I feel it in my gut. My gut's always right." And the next thing you know, he was chopped, and right. I was like, "Oh fuck! I know this isn't chopped, but, but you know what? I mean. yeah. <laughs> You've been but chopped." But basically, but also, when, <laughs> also because Becca was saying like, which I thought was like, "You were so stable, and we clicked so well, and it was like nothing you did is like such a hard thing to hear because like." they were good together and he had every right to think like whether he had those insecurities or not like oh she could pick me because like we're so in love or whatever but to hear that it's like oh so like what am i too boring or too that like it just i feel like that would it felt very relatable though yes, like how yeah. many of us had have had relationships where we want to pinpoint the thing that went wrong and it's just like there just was something right. missing or something i just missing. stopped feeling that way about you and it's nothing you did and, and that's why you know yeah. watching Blake was so affecting as a viewer. I did wish that she hadn't said, you were right, it was gonna be you the whole time. I know. Because right. what is going to mess with him more in a future relationship? Like, you can never believe that things are gonna last yeah, because gonna have some right issues. now it's great, yeah, yeah. But maybe tomorrow it'll be Garrett, you know. So that, yeah. that part I thought he probably could have stood not yeah. hearing. So what do you guys think about Bachelor in Paradise? That premieres tonight. <laughs> We've got a Another lot of five hours. We've got a cast We're gearing up. We're gearing up. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for a little <laughs> bit more lighthearted stuff. I'm ready for Jordan the model right. to just, oh, right. yeah. and oh, all wow. of his weird one-liners. I'm like convinced he's a Westworld prototype. <laughs> <laughs> just like that's how they're He would totally be a host. Yeah. Oh, he would. Yeah. The Bachelor is where they would integrate Yeah, the exactly. Uh -huh. Just you wouldn't be able to tell. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And then Colton, I was his Colton. name, right? The, the virgin who's crying. Colton and no. Tia. That, <laughs> the virgin who's crying. I mean, Poor sorry. That's, uh, I, I was shocked when I heard that he was a virgin. Like, I was shocked. I don't know why people, like, I get it. It's surprising. But, like, I want people to stop giving him shit for No, it's not a bad virgin. thing. Are people giving him shit? I think they're just being, like, surprised about it. Right? I yeah. think the guys on the show said some things about how it was yeah. a skeleton in his closet mm -hmm. or a red yeah. flag. Uh, I think that yeah, probably uh, got in his head. But people have been getting behind him, I think, yeah. in Bachelor yeah. Nation. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. think of that trailer, though, with him and Tia? Tia? I mean, that looks like drama. Oh, yeah, I think the producers were like, yes. <laughs> yeah. this, is, uh, this is our crown jewel. We have them. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, from what I've seen, I think they send Colton in a little late just to kind of stir mm. up drama, so... You know, they're very they're very smart on Bachelor in Paradise. They'll set one relationship up and then send the one person in that can completely destroy things, and that just happens over and over and over again for, you know, 10 yeah. episodes. Yeah. If you go in saying, I'm only here for Colton, they're not gonna have you and Colton show up the first day, yeah. settle right. into a couple. That's just not good television. Yeah. I love so. when they say they're only here for someone. Like, I'm only here for, it's just so stupid. <laughs> yeah. But um, is this the uh, this first season back from Bachelor in Paradise after Corinne's yeah. whole after episode? Yeah, the scandal, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to see if they've made any thoughtful adjustments whatsoever. There's already a scandal that's come out of it though with Leah and Becca, right? Yeah, that's an interesting situation because it seems like that was not a Bachelor in Paradise oh. scandal per se. It seems like what happened is Becca saw some posts maybe uh, on Reddit, people sent her DMs indicating that Leo has a history of sending women unsolicited dick pics oh. and otherwise uh, very charming behaving thing. Yes. as a creep toward them. And so she posted a bunch of them on her Instagram story. Leo responded. It became a bit heated. There was litigation discussed. Um, and I don't know if there are any roots in Bachelor in Paradise because as we can see that Leo has a uh, uh, some sort of hookup with Kendall, her mm -hmm. good friend, on In Paradise, and maybe that doesn't end well, but um, it seems like there are other reasons that Leo is having Yeah, it this. seems like it was a separate thing, but I'm sure it will It will obviously play into the way that we watch Leo yeah. on the show. I mean, how could it not? So you guys have your podcast. I know you talk about Bachelor and Bachelorette. Do you guys also do Bachelor in Paradise? Like, oh, yeah. what are your yeah. topics in a... <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we talk about all, all the... How to make friends. Yeah. Yeah. How to make friends. 
Yeah. Yeah, we tell people how to make friends. <laughs> um, we just befriend everyone who comes on the show. That's right. actually why we created the podcast. We we're like, we don't have enough friends. Yeah. So we have to recruit them in this very round. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I mean, we started the podcast because we wanted to talk about a show that we loved, but also the way that it intersects with a lot of real world mm -hmm. issues, uh, feminism, uh, love and sex and dating, and, sex and, and the way and that, yeah, what the show, the, you know, the show has been on since 2002. It's one of the longest running reality television shows. So to me, I'm always interested in why has this had staying power? What does it kind of say about the world around us? Why are we so obsessed mm -hmm. with it, even, you know, sometimes? Uh, beyond our better judgment, <laughs> in spite of our better judgment. Yeah. So, for example, last season on Paradise was a disaster, and yet we're gonna watch again. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing we like to examine. <laughs> well, you guys are not alone, and I love that your podcast is a destination for sycophants like me to <laughs> <laughs> listen to other people talk about The Bachelor. So, thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Give it up for Emma and Claire. Yeah. And make sure to listen to their podcast here to make friends. It's really good, and we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. <laughs>